Hey guys, what's up? So let's continue uh, setting up our generic character here using the AI template by Infector. And in the previous tutorial, if you didn't watch the previous tutorial, go back one and watch it because there we set up our generic character here. All the components, the basic locomotion, uh, apply damage and all of that. Now we're going to change his behavior uh, and controller from a basic to a combat controller. So to do that, first let's change the controller, AI controller. As you can see we have four types of controllers here. A basic one just for civilian, a combat one which is a basic combat, a melee and a shooter. The difference between the, co the combat and the melee is that this one you can use it on more simple characters such as this one which uh, he does he only have a couple of attack animations he will not change weapons he doesn't use he actually he doesn't use any weapons at all so uh, as you may know our melee combat system can change the animations move sets based on your weapons ID so if I'm using a katana, I will be moving using a moveset animation from the katana. And same thing for other weapons. But again, this is a very simple one. So let's use the AI combat. So let's set up a detection for him. I actually don't need a detection point reference. If you don't know what this is, watch previous tutorials. I'm already explaining all of that. I just need to detect a layer, in this case I want to find the player and also tag player which is on my FPS controller that I'm using right now and basically that's it here I can set the minimum attack time, max attack time, mean attack count and max attack count for this character he does he only have two animations so let's uh, change to 2 and he doesn't have strafe combat as we showed in the previous tutorial he only moves uh, forward so uncheck that cool uh, for now I think that's it let's see the FSM behavior controller I will change it for, from a civilian simple to a civilian fighter Cool. We changed the controllers. Now we need a melee manager. You can type the melee manager here or go to Invector, AI controller, components, AI melee manager. Now, since this is a generic character, the create default, default body members will not work. This only works for uh, humanoid characters. So let's add an extra body member to him. Click in here member type is generic and in here you can create pretty much any body type that you want for example if you have a dragon and this dragon has a attack animation using the tail you can create several um, hitboxes like tail 1, tail 2, tail 3 and enable those hitboxes when that animation is playing. It's pretty cool. So for this character I will create one for the right hand and one for the left hand. So let's find the right hand here on the rig structure and right palm. Cool, let's hit create and here it is my first hitbox. I can select here and actually increase a little bit. So it's easier for him to hit the player. Cool. I think I can copy this and let's create another left arm palm. Uh, it's saying here that this body part already exists. So let's change it to left hand, hit create, and here it is. Since I copied the transform, I will paste it here so it is 
uh, with the same size. Right, we set up our hitboxes. Now we need to, to say to the animator controller when to enable this, those hitboxes. Otherwise, every time I touch those hitboxes, it will apply damage to me. So let's go to our animator controller, select the cactus. Uh, on the previous tutorials, set up all the basic locomotion and these actions. Now we're going to set up the attacks. Let's copy from the full body and paste it here on actions. Now we no longer need the full body layer. Let's go here and actually I don't need this new uh, verification as well. Actually, I'm, I don't need the wiki tags as well. I just need the, I just need the unarmed. Let's go back to the actions, paste here, delete this one, and call this attacks. Like I said before, we only have two animations, and actually, I'm going to use just one because. Let's take a look at the attack animation. It's a single clip uh, containing the two attack punches. I could create two clips, one for the left and one for the uh, right, but instead I'm going to use a single clip and use multiple attack uh, melee attack controls to trigger those animations. So. First, let's assign the attack animation here. Make sure that you're using the tag attack and also the V animator state listener. Now we need to say to the melee attack control, the body part we, we want to use is the one that we just created here. It's the, it's the right hand. So let's go here and change it to generic and right hand. Cool. As you can see here, we have a start damage and end damage. This is the timing that the hitbox will be enable and disable. So if you go to the animation, you can see here that about here we can enable our hitbox about 0.2 and it finishes at 0.35 as you can see here so 0.2 it will turn on the hitbox and 0.35 it will disable as you can see uh, we're using the melee attack type of unarmed it's not a melee weapon now let's add another v melee attack control in the same clip melee attack control use the body part generic left hand to enable our left hand uh, hitbox. This one will be enabled at 0.6 and disable at 0.8, actually 0.75. So 0.6, 0.75. Let's uh, check the reset attack trigger, which you should always check on the last uh, anim attack animation. I forgot to mention that we need to have a way to trigger this animation, and the way is to create a transition using the parameter weak attack. Let's uncheck the can transition to self. Another important thing that I forgot to mention is that we need to create a transition to exit this substate machine. Otherwise, I, I will exit this one and ent enter uh, the default one. So I always make sure to create a exit transition. So he does go back to the locomotion. Now, we set up that the detection will detect the player but we also need to set up in the melee manager that uh, we want to hit the player. So as you can see the default one is enemy here, change it to player and now the hitbox will actually apply damage to the 
player. So let's take a look if it works. We will apply some damage to him. As you can see, the hitboxes are disabled. He detected me, and now he's coming at me and punch me. As, as you can see, the hitboxes enable just at the right time as we set up, and I'm receiving damage from him. Pretty cool, huh? So, that's how you set up a custom hitboxes. Like I told you, if you have a dragon, you can make one for the head, for the tail. You can create pretty much any kind of hitboxes you need. Pretty easy, right? Hope you have some fun with the Mill Manager and the generic AI. See you in the next one.